friends, you're joining us online and when, wherever you are and whenever you are worshiping, you belong. We are one body and together we are complete in Christ who calls us and saves us. Honoring that, let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for hearing our prayers, our praise, and our worship. Whether we're gathered together in person or online, whether simultaneous on live stream or later whenever we can. You are Lord of yesterday, today, and forever. So you are Lord of now, whenever now is, and wherever we are. You are here, both here and now, with us. And wherever you are, whenever you are, we belong. In the name of Jesus, the Christ who saves us and welcomes us home. In you. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of your eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see in you your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading for the day is a reading from Isaiah. In the king, year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar 
with a pair of tongs, the seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the psalm for the day, Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of the, glo the God of glory thunders. The Lord upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you did not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you did not believe, how can, I, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning we have a special uh, time. We do this every year, and we have our graduating seniors who have chosen to do so to share a message with us. And so without further ado, I hand you on to our graduating seniors. Hi, I'm Flory Brockwell, and it has been my honor to be a part of the St. James the Less church community for the past nine years. In elementary school, my family joined St. James the Less, and I immediately felt welcome into this loving community. I enjoyed attending Sunday school classes and participating in the Christmas pageant. When I was finally old enough, I joined the middle school youth group. PK, Allie Mead, Mr. Yance, and my mom did a great job of teaching us to appreciate God's presence while also keeping us under control. I always loved singing with the youth group, going on retreats, and making up skits for our youth group Sunday. Then we started going to Shrinemont for PYM retreats. If any of you have ever been to Shrinemont, you know it brings the best out in people. PYM was a great experience for me because I got to see other kids my age enjoy Jesus, as well as high school role models, including my brother Wright, Jack Keck, and Corinna Klein. PYM was a great place to grow friendships and strengthen the bond of our youth group. After falling in love with the environment at PYM, I decided I wanted to go to Shrinemont's St. George's Summer Camp. Thanks to the financial assistance from the Chinry Foundation, I was able to go the summer before my eighth grade year and I had a blast developing my faith with like-minded kids. At St. George's, I made friends who I will actually be going to college with next year. I especially feel the opportunity to have chaplain's time gave me the chance to grow closer to God and a stronger grasp on understanding the gospel. Through high school and until the pandemic, I continued to go to youth group meetings and became active in Patrick Henry's Young Life program. Through the pandemic, Young Life has given me a great outlet to stay in touch with a small group of girls while we support each other and use our lives to better understand scripture and Jesus's love. Through church, I have been blessed to work with Rock, the Pace family, and, the, and Yancey Jones. Thank you all for showing me what a role model and a caring church community should look like. Through the youth group, I've loved learning from PK and Alita, Mr. Yance, the Mead family, and the Klein family. Thank you all for being intentional with your time and always challenging my curiosity. I would also like to thank the Ellathorps. Miss Sally was my cherub choir director and my first piano teacher. She and Mr. Ellathorp hold a very special place in my heart. 
And Mr. Olathorpe, thank you for always sharing your snacks with me after school. I really enjoyed being a part of the Acolyte team because I thought learning about the formalities of the church was interesting. And I had the best mentor ever, Mr. Pace. Finally, I'd like to thank my family. Mom, Tim, Wright, and Ryan, thank you for encouraging and supporting me for the past 18 years. I couldn't have done it without you all. As many of you know, I completed my Girl Scout Gold Award project last summer during the pandemic. One of the two boxes I created stands at the door next to the free clinic. Rock was very generous and helpful when assisting me in the final steps of my project. So thank you all for supporting the Blessing Box and the opportunity to give back to the community through the Gold Award program. As you can tell from my testimony, St. James the Less has been the base of my spirituality. Because of my busy high school schedule and the unfortunate shutdown of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been hard to gather with the church and be as active as I was in the past. However, I am beyond thankful for all that St. James the Less has given me. Without this church, I would have never been able to step out of my spiritual comfort zone at camps or create the lifelong relationships that I have with the people in this community. Next year, I will continue my educational and spiritual journey at Virginia Tech. Go Hokies! I have been accepted into the Pamplin School of Business and the Virginia Tech Honors Program. Finally, the number one thing that I have held on to from youth group comes from the song Isaiah 40. The lyrics say, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like eagles with wings of great length. I know that God wanted me to be a part of this church because this is what St. James Celeste has done for me. My experiences here have strengthened me to mount up like an eagle, and I know that all I do in the future will be because of the lifelong lessons I've learned from this amazing experience. Thank you, St. James the Less. Hi, my name is Hardy Mead, and I'm a senior at Patrick Henry High School. You know, I always remember being a little kid and watching the seniors go up and give their speeches and thinking about how those kids were so big, so old, and so wise. They got to know everything. You're know, about to graduate high school. But now here I am in that exact same spot, about to graduate and on my way to make Steve Pace proud. Go Hokies. Um, I realized, that, wow, there's still so much about the world I need to learn. Um, but as I turn the page to the next chapter of my life, I've got to reflect on the journey that brought me to be the man that I am today. Now, I got to attribute a lot of that to St. James the Less. I practically grew up here. I remember as far back as being a little kid um, playing with the little puppets behind the stage in the Sunday school room um, or coming to Heavenly Creations and full football pads because I would come straight from practice. I'm definitely going to miss Heavenly Creations a lot. They used to always be so well done and they could not have pulled that off if it wasn't for Catherine Tanker. She did an amazing job, and I'm definitely never going to forget that part of growing up. Especially her gardens. Those things were beautiful. But um, I digest. Another huge part that really connected me to the church that I remember very fondly, just because, you know, it's all in Brighton Hall, um, it was coffee hour. After the sermon, they would always go in for coffee. And, you know, being a little kid, I was just excited because there was food. And then, well, actually, no, even as a teenager, I was excited just because Janet Taylor makes the best bread. But I would always have these greatest conversations with people in there. I remember very specifically so many times, especially when I was like a freshman and junior, I mean, not junior, um, freshman and sophomore, I would talk to Jim Cobb about football for so many times, so many Sundays. It just stood in that corner by the window talking about how under center was more effective in 1990 than it was now. And so many other people like that. I could talk about it for hours. Um, but 
what really brought me the closest to the church was probably the acolyte program. I remember being in fifth grade, dressed up in my little uh, red skirt and the white thing that went over top of it. I don't know what it's called, <laughs> but I probably should have learned that, but you know, a little late for that now. <laughs> um, and that was fun. I like being a part of the sermon. I like being a part of what was happening. But what really connected me the most was carrying the brass cross. I always made it a point to hold it as high as I possibly could. Because I remember um, I wanted to be promoted from Candle Boy so bad. And I used to beg Steve Pace. I was like, please promote me. Please let me carry the cross. And he always told me, no, you're too young. And then eventually he caved and he let me do it. And I had to put on a show. I had to show that, you know what? I'm young, but I can hold his cross just as good as anybody else. And that became my thing. I did that all the way through high school. Um, and that's truly what brought me to feel so close to everything um, that I grew up around. But another huge thing was youth group and Shrine Mott. I, like I said, I could talk for hours about growing up with the church and everything that was great about it. But the mission trips, PYM, um, I got to say, so much respect to PK for dealing with us, you know, dumb middle schoolers on a Sunday night. And then as we got to high school, um, Alita, Derek Rosser, the Kleins, for making Sunday night arguably like the worst part of any week, um, besides Monday, um, enjoyable. I would look forward to it, which never happens in the history of ever. Nobody ever looks forward to Sunday night, except for football, but that's a different story. Um, And Shrymont, so many great memories there. I remember the drive up is always beautiful. The lovely mountain air. Yancey Jones telling scary stories. Or obviously the highlight, my dad getting really into Love Me Two Times by the Doors. But it's all those memories and all of those influences that turned me into the person I am today. And I'm going to miss it. I really am. This morning, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning, the prayers of the people are Form 3. Please pray responsibly. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Elaine Bellier. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask to only what accords with your will and those things and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God, the Creator. The peace of Christ, the Redeemer. The peace of the Spirit, the Life Giver. The peace of the One and of the Three. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Today we honor our graduates this Sunday. And here are all the names we've received so far. Congratulations to all of them. Uh, we're listing them by alphabetical last name. Flory Brockwell, graduating from Patrick Henry High School. She's attending Virginia Tech in the fall. Keenan Field. Graduating from the University of Virginia with a Master's in Religious Studies. Hardy Mead, graduating from Patrick Henry High School, and he is attending Virginia Tech in the fall. Emma Margaret Murphy, graduated from Belmont University with a Doctorate in Occupational Therapy. Piper Shiflett, graduated from Emory University Rollins School of Public Health with her Master's in Public Health and Global Health with a concentration in Infectious Diseases. And Quinn Smith, graduating from Patrick Henry High School 
and he will be attending Brandeis University in the fall. Catherine Ann Stockwell, graduating from Patrick Henry High School, she's attending Virginia Tech in the fall. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. This morning, uh, we say together the prayer and absence of the great thanksgiving. Let us pray. O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts, cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And in closing today, please join me in closing our in, in saying our concluding prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Thank you for being with us today. Celebrate with the seniors this day. It's a wonderful celebration. At our 10 o'clock service, we will be in person, weather permitting, out front. Um, if you'd like to join us, um, we will have one of our seniors able to share with us. Um, he was the only one that could. Uh, but that will be at 10 o'clock. Hardy Mead will be uh, preaching today. Um, and then uh, starting next week in June and going forward, we will be back inside in the church. Signups will be coming out uh, with our Tuesday email um, and then instructions and a video on Friday. So if you'd like to sign up to be here with us at 10 o'clock or 8.30, let's try it the other way in proper order, 8.30 or 10 o'clock, we would love to have you with us. We will be seated in twos or threes as able. Uh, to fit the most people in the church. And so if you have any questions on that, contact the office. Um, you may call if you're not comfortable with doing signups on the computer, um, but we'll be here to help however we can. God's blessings and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.